Hello everyone, this is Korean Kukbang and I will be making varieties of kimchi. So I'm making radish kimchi but I have added beets to my kimchi. Kimchi is a traditional side dish in Korea. So I'm going to be making, you know, I'm using half of a tuber of radish. I'm going to, I'm, uh, I'm cleaning my radish. I'm going to peel it and then dice it into um, bite-sized cubes okay all right so here is me dicing trying to cut my yes my radish into bite-sized cubes and um okay i'm going to set it aside so i'm going to add uh, one tablespoon of sugar and one tablespoon of salt and i'm going to just mix it into the radish so I'm going to add the salt, I'm going to mix it well into the radish so that it's going to soak really really in and give me a tasty radish, okay? So I have my beets, I have diced a whole tuba of beets and these are my other ingredients. I'm going to be using some chives, 5 uh, cloves of garlic, a little piece of ginger, a little onion and some spring onions. And then I'm going to be using fish sauce. And um, you can change the fish sauce to vegetable sauce or soy sauce if you are a vegetarian. Okay, so I'm going to be blending um, um, only the onion, the garlic, and the ginger. I have blended that. And so these are my ingredients. So this is the, the chives, the pepper, the blended uh, paste, spring onions, soy sauce, and my fish sauce. So these are the ingredients for radish kimchi. However, okay, the, the, the radish has sat for a while and then it has released its water. So I'm going to be sieving out that water and keeping it, setting it aside because we are definitely going to need it later. So we'll just remove the water and set it aside. We are setting it aside because if we mix it like that directly, it might be too much for our mixture. Okay. All right, so that's the radish into my mixing bowl. I've added, the, I'm adding the beets, then I'm adding the pepper flakes into the mixture. I am going to be using my spring onions. I've been, my chives has been cut into small sizes. My spring onions will go into it. And then the onion, ginger, and the garlic paste is going into it also. Okay. It's looking really, really interesting. So I'm going to add uh, two tablespoons of fish sauce and I'm going to add just one tablespoon of soy sauce just for my own taste. You might decide to use one of the two. You might decide to use vegetable sauce if you are a pure vegetarian, okay? So you just go in with your glove and try to mix everything together and let it combine uniformly you just give it a good mix let it combine uniformly and then you have it this is how it's looking really beautiful and colorful i mean i'm a lover of colors when it comes to food so this is really beautiful so the water we set aside i discovered it wasn't too much so we could just i just went in with everything it was enough for the radish but you don't want too much water because in a way it brings out its own water later so i am not going to if the water was more than that i wouldn't have added you know more water so i'm going to pack it into my jar and i'm going to you know just you are going to press it down so much that there is no hair hiding anywhere in that jar so you press it down press it down press it down to release as much air as possible as you can and uh, that is the form in which i am going to store my radish and beet kimchi this radish and beet kimchi is actually a healthier variety of kimchi because of the beets present in it so i tell you please do try this out it is promises to be interesting so kimchi made from napa cabbage is our next recipe 
this is um, a fermented food that Korean is known for worldwide and in this era of um, rising awareness of fermented foods i think kimchi really stands out is one of the most popular fermented food options that we have you can eat it freshly with rice or you eat it as a side dish with some other interesting delicacies so we are going to be making napa cabbage kimchi all right so you just clean your get the freshest cabbage that you can get clean it and um, divide it into majorly four portions and then remove the stalk like um, the stalk of the cabbage just clean it and make it interesting you can cut it into whatever shape that you really want to make it simpler but i just love it this way okay so i have decided to cut it into those form So I will wash and wash and rewash and rewash just to be sure that it is clean. So you can wash up to three, four times just to be sure that your cabbage is clean. And then you add salt to your washing water so that from there, the cabbage will begin to absorb little, little salt. Okay, so I am done washing. This is my last round of washing. I'm taking it out of the water. And then you are going to salt it so that you have a tasty kimchi so i washed like three to four times and then i added enough salt like i used half a cup of salt to just salt the cabbage layer by layer as much as i can so that the cabbage can be well cured we call it curing and then so it's going to like become a little bit soft and then salt and it's going to really really pepper flakes my fish sauce my sugar and my salt and then I have um, rice flour sweet rice flour and the vegetables I am using I'm using chives carrots radish and um, green onions okay so that those are the basic ingredients for kimchi however if you're vegetarian you use uh, you use soy sauce or you might decide not to you might omit the fish sauce okay so I am going to make a slurry of um, the rice flour so that it will act as the base of all the ingredients. So I'm adding two cups of water to my pot and I will just pour in the rice flour. The thickness of the rice flour I think is dependent on you. For me, I wanted a thick base and I had one. So I the rice flour I had less than the um, half cup, let's say a quarter cup of rice flour into that mixture and when it's solidified I poured it into a bowl and allowed it to cool so I needed it to cool a little bit fast so I tried to walk my spoon through it so that at least it could be a little bit faster and then I eventually it was taking time so I opened a little water into my zinc so that it could help yeah I put my bowl in there so that it could get 
you know cool faster so this is my garlic ginger and onion blend i've added that to the rice slurry the rice flour slurry and then a cup of pepper paste of korean pepper 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 flakes i mean and i will mix that well into my mixture and then my fish sauce is going to go sorry my sugar one spoon two spoons of sugar my fermented shrimps and then uh, my soy my fish sauce is going in next the fish sauce really gives it a very unique taste so if you are not a vegetarian please make sure you add fish sauce to your kimchi and then i added a spoon of salt and my vegetables goes in next okay so this is my kimchi paste this is my kimchi sauce so it is my kimchi sauce is ready so what i just need to do is my uh, salted cabbage i will be taking it in and be layering it in with the uh the sauce that we have made or the soup or whatever so i begin to layer it in layer by layer just to get the best kimchi that i can okay so that way after wearing my gloves i begin to layer it in layer it in layer it in you know so this is how kimchi is made so what we are just expected to do after now is that um you can keep the kimchi for a very you know for a very long time it lasts for a whole year in fact in korea people make kimchi for that will last them for a whole year and they just keep it in the refrigerator and that is where it will remain and then it is a food because kimchi accompanies almost every food when you want to eat in korea there must be a kimchi somewhere that is going to accompany that menu so it is a popular in fact it is the most popular traditional korean menu or korean recipe korean is known for kimchi worldwide yes this is my kimchi sitting beautifully so you try to press it and remove as much air as you can and then you cover it so i will leave it to sit at the corner of my kitchen for a day and then i'll move it into my fridge so from kimchi i am going to be making another menu and that is kimchi they call it kimchi fried rice but I am sure that in my country it will be called kimchi jollof rice. So it is another interesting menu that will be made from kimchi. And um, we are just going to cut your kimchi into bite sizes. So this is me cutting my kimchi into bite sizes. I just need about a cup of that. And these are the ingredients for my kimchi fried rice. A cup of fermented kimchi, little pepper paste, my spring onions i'm going to be using tuna vegetable tuna that's my choice and uh, i'm using two cups of cooked korean rice i'm going to be using my sesame oil that's the flavor of this recipe and then a little bit about two spoons of vegetable oil so that's the vegetable oil i'm pouring that into my pot and I'm going to stir fry my kimchi just a bit. I don't want it to lose its freshness and its crispiness. So I'm just going to stir fry a bit and I'm then going to add in all other ingredients. That is it about kimchi fried rice. So that's it. I've added my rice and then I'm just going to stir it in, stir it in and stir it in so you add your i'm adding my tuna you might decide to use anything you might decide to use your pork you might decide to use um, anything any protein of your choice it's fine and the the game changer is the sesame oil that gives the taste it gives a very good flavor and it makes the rice to come out a little bit shiny okay 
so our kimchi fried rice is ready i didn't add seaweed which is kim some people had will now um, sprinkle or just squeeze kim on the rice but i didn't because i was going to be rolling it in form of kimbap so that i can make a kind of kimbap with the korean uh, fried rice with the kimchi fried rice so it's just rolling it into kimbap into round balls just to make it a little bit you know a little bit of difference yes so we are just going to arrange it like kimbap usually there are a lot of vegetables that goes into kimbap you use your um, carrots cabbage pickled radish cucumbers fish cakes any vegetable that you can lay your hand upon you just cut them into long stripes and you use them to layer your kimbap but this particular one i was not going to allow the fact that i don't have a lot of vegetables to stop me what i needed was just something different so those are the vegetables i could lay my hand on and um, i have pickled radish i have my carrots so i'll just um, use my kimchi fried rice to make kimbap and i'm going to enjoy it just as it is so the mat is called kimbap mat it is specially designed for that purpose so we just use it to carefully roll the seaweed that's kim around the rice and then you're going to add a little bit of rice at the tip so that it acts as a gum for the rice so it's a gum it's going to act like a kind of gum so that the rice can just stick together a little and i heard a story that uh, kimbap in the olden days there was no there was no picnic that was complete without wonderful kimbap around kids look forward to picnics because they know they are going to have wonderful kimbap to snack on or as food so it is also a very common food in korea kimbap and pipimbap and i must say that kim kim means seaweed and um pap means rice so kimbap is actually rolled rice rice that is rolled in seaweed so that's kimbap there is also pipimbap which is mixed rice so it is also another signature food of korea kimbap so if you have the opportunity you have seaweed you can just roll it you know around your food and i tell you it is also a very delicious korean menu be sure to try it out when you have the opportunity even if you don't have all the veggies you can just put in any veggies that you can lay your hand upon and make a wonderful kimbap I am actually a newbie in the rolling of kimbap, but I'm sure you get the gist, okay? So this is my, my kimbap rolling process. So you can just interchange it and change the colors you can arrange it play around do what you know what pleases you enjoy the moment savor the moment really really well <laughs> and i tell you you will enjoy making kimbap it's a very interesting snack or food it is eaten both as a snack here and it is eaten as food you can find it on supermarket shelves and like i said it is another signature food of korean so pairing it with uh, kimchi fried rice is actually a very interesting thing 
I'm, sh I'm sincerely telling you this is really really tasty I lie not it's really tasty and I tell you just try to try to try it out okay if you don't have this mat there are a lot of ways you can improvise you can use a table mat and designate it for this purpose and then you can just walk around maybe a paper bag or something that is a little bit thick that can give you so this is the kimbap so you just cut it into bite sizes and enjoy so i'm rolling it in with another yes with an other another sesame oil okay it's going to make it shine much brighter and it's going to impart on the taste and the flavor so this is me eating my wonderful kimbap i tell you the taste is wow you see the sesame oil is the carrot the pickled radish the kimchi fried rice all mixed together in one roll and you're eating it together you're just eating it together like that in one bite actually comes out beautifully well chincha machinen um shake yo kajan machinen um shake yo so i admonish you to try it eat it it is a delicious recipe and anywhere you are i sincerely admonish you to eat korean foods enjoy korean foods love korean foods it is interestingly delicious if there is anything like that so i really enjoyed myself eating the kimbap making the kimchi eating the kimbap and doing it it is just perfect it is really perfect Thank you for watching.